What's up, everybody? It is good to get back in the studio today to talk about a burning question the internet has, and I have actually too. How many contacts, how many instances of contact can I run inside of Pro Tools uh, at one time uh, using the brand new Apple M1 Mac Mini? And um, it is, it's interesting because I created this session just to look at some mixed use uses of contact in here. So in here we have a far light, we have a few different flavors of guitar. Let me just play this. I'll let you guys guess what this is and we'll just see what this sounds like. So you guys guess what that melody is, but I created this just for fun the other night, just to show mixed use, multiple instances of contact running in Pro Tools for a rock song. There's obviously many different types of songs that you can create using contacts. There's a lot of orchestral uh, users out there that will use multiple instances of contact for orchestral music. So I've got on here a drum track. I've got five different string tracks. Um, so right there is six so far. Um, and then I've got three different uh, guitar flavors. Uh, and that's so that's going to be nine so far. And then I've got a vocal layer, which is provided by Farlight, uh, Fairlight, Farlight uh, on top. So let's just talk about the performance. I mean, up to this point, you can see I've had really no issues. Um, and I'm sitting at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten instances of contact. I've got a few plugins running, but very minimal at this point, just a couple on the buses, SSL compressor here at the at the master bus and L2, not really doing much limiting, but just making sure that we're good uh, from an overall level standpoint and not clipping on the master bus. And that's it, really. I, it's just very, very minimal uh, mixing, um, but then uh, mostly just levels and, and, you know, mixing of the various levels, making sure the drums are the, you know, kind of loudest thing in the mix and that sort of stuff. Um, but that's that's really all. This is kind of mixed-use rock sort of music, you know what I mean? And I'm sitting here at 76 memories. So where am I at, you know, with this kind of a song or this kind of a use case? 10 to 15 instances of contact, you know, somewhere in there. I think 20 is probably going to be pushing it, uh, you know. And, and basically, once you max out the memory, uh, that contact is loading, and it's loading the memory every time you actually load an instance of contact. And so you can kind of open these here, and you can see uh, the memory usage. Um, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to bog down the memory that you have on your machine just to load that particular instance of contact. If you were to take and load the same instrument multiple times, it would probably use less. And so that's another thing to be mindful of as well, that if you're mixing the type of instrument, you know, depending on the use case and depending on the instruments you choose, obviously those are going to be quite demanding on your environment as well. Another quick note about where I'm at in terms of overall Pro Tools performance is I have the hardware buffer size maxed out to its highest possible which basically means that I don't care about, <laughs> about recording audio at this point and latency. There's going to be this amount of latency at least, you know what I mean, when, when working with this kind of a workflow. And it just, you know, over time, as I started to add instruments and add uh, demand to the overall processing on the machine, I started to increase the buffer size along the way just to make sure that it was performing at an optimal level. So those are the kind of things that you have to be mindful of as well, just depending on where your machine is at, how much your machine can handle. Um, that is going to be the somewhat limit 
of the number of instances of contact you can you can run for a mixed use sort of a rock song about 10 to 15 uh, 20 is probably pushing it. Now we're going to look at a slightly different use case of contact, which is more or less just like how many instances of contact of a certain instrument, the same exact instrument, can you open at any given time? And as you can see, it it <laughs> runs down the page uh, up here to 33. And my memory usage up to this point is only about 54%. Now I will say that after opening the previous session, I shut down my machine and then reopened this session because opening this session right after opening my previous session apparently still had all of that loaded into the memory and so it maxed out the memory usage and now when i restart my machine and load this session it is now um you know is sitting here at 54 percent. so i could feasibly open uh more there's room to grow you know what i mean i could open up more instances at this point and this is using the same exact sort of um mix bus approach so i've just got some ssl channels and the bus compression and the l2 at the very end and that's it really and you know just listening to it <clears throat> i've got all the volumes really trimmed so that at the end uh, uh, you know of course when you add them all together And if I just take this channel and add a little 16K air on the top. Add a little 200. That's really all that I'm doing. You know, there's not much happening. You know, SSL bus compression. Just want to make the... Uh... So, you know, I'm not doing much. And as you can see... Uh, I've got about 30 open here, and, and I did, you know, some experimentation with this, um, you know, opening some right after some sessions, restarting the machine, like giving it room to breathe, that kind of thing. And that's the overall best performance is you can get if you, you know, if you want to, you know, you're going to load a bunch of string instruments, you know what I mean, say, and, and a lot of them might, might even be the same instrument, maybe just slightly different settings and things of that nature, then you could come in you know, and start using your machine cold. In other words, having your machine turned off and then turn it on and go into this session and get probably get a lot of really, really good performance and probably, I would say, better performance than if you were coming off of another session where you had, again, another sort of different use case but high memory usage at that time kind of going right into this session. It's uh, It seems to be best if you restart your machine. Um, all of that being said, you can load a lot of contacts at one time if you happen to be using the same instrument. So now we're going to look at a really useful feature inside of Pro Tools when working with contact or with any virtual instrument, really. And that is just using the commit feature to take this particular channel, it's an auxiliary channel or a virtual instrument channel, and record the audio from that into its own channel. I'm just going to uh, briefly, uh, we'll take a listen to this particular channel um, and see what this sounds like. All right, very good. First, what I'm going to do is rename this SCE for source. So that way I know... When I look back upon this, that this is the source instrument that this particular audio came from. And um, it's just a habit that I've gotten into. You'll see where this comes into play just in one second. So um, I'm going to right click on this channel and hit commit. And selected tracks, uh, copy sends and group assignments, that's fine. Uh, insert after last selected track, that's perfect because it's going to just put it right there 
um, in its place or right after it, depending on this setting, which is whether or not you hide and make that, make that track inactive or you make it inactive or you delete it or you do nothing. Now these options, I very rarely choose the delete option. Uh, sometimes I'll choose the do nothing, but more often than not, I'll use this first option, which is the entire point of committing this track. Um, and, and I'll go ahead and hide it and make it inactive. So um, you'll see what that does. And it's just running through. And then there it is. There's the audio. And then what I'll do, instead of have it be strings one, S-C-E-C-M, I'll remove that part. And then now that particular channel name is available since I chose to name the original strings one SCE. And there it is. It's right there. It's not gone anywhere. And I can always, you know, I could always choose to show it. I could always make it active again and go ahead and start tweaking the settings of that contact. It's all been saved and archived there, but um, it's it's now been printed to audio. And so now we've reduced the demand that is needed for that particular instrument, and yet we can still hear it, you know, just like with the original. So that is the workflow that I like to use personally to go ahead and commit the tracks down to audio. So if we take a look at what this feature is doing underneath the hood, you can choose to render the volume and mute automation uh, or the pan automation. You can choose to render that where you, can, you currently have it set. I typically don't. I typically find a good level uh, for that particular audio that I'm trying to uh, print. And then I print it at a good, what I would say, record level. Um, and then I uh, mix it after the fact once it's been printed to audio. So really what I would typically do is I would listen to this particular track. And that just so happens to be playing back at a volume that sounds pretty good. So then I would choose the commit feature and I would choose in this case to render the volume and mute automation because that would go ahead and um, and and keep uh, you know the the level that I have it currently set to and print that. And so I'll go ahead and print. And you can see that the audio is playing back at the volume that I recorded it at, but the audio is actually uh, playing back at unity or it's playing back at zero uh, decibels. Whereas this first one that I printed is playing back at negative 6.5. So what happened there? What's the difference between the two commit settings? So just to explain that, um, it's the difference between having this setting on and off, and you can do the same thing for pan, but that's basically where you tell Pro Tools when you're rendering the track what it's going to do to this volume setting right here. And obviously I have that volume set just to a static volume setting, but um, what, what Pro Tools is saying here is, is do you want to commit that at the volume setting that you have? Or do you want to commit the instrument as it's currently sitting before it hits that volume setting? And therefore, when you render it, we'll just keep the volume setting that you had in there to begin with. So when you go back and show uh, this particular instrument, so I'll cancel this and I'll show strings one. That's the volume setting that I had on strings one as I printed it. And so it just kept that volume setting when it printed it down to strings one. And with this one, I actually chose to turn on the volume and mute automation when I was printing that track. And so it actually printed that. And therefore, the volume setting starts at its default Pro Tools setting, which is zero decibels. 
So that's the difference between how it behaves with commit. Be sure that you commit the volume that you want. Uh, and I, again, treat it like you are recording things and proceed accordingly. So at this point, I would actually maybe keep, uh, because it's handy in this case, I would actually keep strings to and then probably lower it if I need to. Um, but maybe I don't need to because I've recorded it at a level that's fairly ideal and, and therefore don't need to do that. So just keep, keep in mind, just be mindful of the recording levels that you are printing and commit. That is an important lesson. Commit. It is the name of the feature. It's the, it's, it's actually a philosophy. If you think about it, um, you know, don't, don't, don't dwell in the mire, <laughs> of indecisiveness. If you like the sound that you have, um, if it sounds good, it is good, right? And just commit to it and leave it at that. That is really it. I just wanted to make a video about pushing the boundaries of how many instances of contact can I open inside of Pro Tools. You know, 10 to 15 to 20 for like a rock setting and then 30 to 40 to 50 of the same exact instrument opened many different times inside of Pro Tools. So. Um, it's nice to know that I can push those boundaries should the need arise for me to do that. And yeah, I'm glad I could answer this question, this burning question that we have about this machine and how it performs under the demands of multiple contacts at once. Until next time. Thank you.